one of the stereotypes or the ideas that we talk about, the concept that we talk about in the in the book, which people find I think quite helpful when thinking through those stereotypes, is this notion of women being presented in advertising as the as the good girl, as it always having to play a role which is pleasing through the to the male lens or through male eyes. And that gets executed in a number of different ways, I guess, as, as kind of the way little girls are presented and the way brands that target little girls um, get developed is to suggest that girls are all about being soft and gentle and affectionate and that those ideas about being a girl, being feminine, get cemented very early on in female life. Um, and then obviously as women get older and they move into kind of puberty and post-adolescence and into kind of young adulthood, there's a huge focus in marketing on female appearance, how women look. Um, and in particular, uh, a look which is quite singular. Um, and there is kind of broader representation now of the way women should look than there was perhaps when we first started out. But when we started out, it was really kind of tall, thin, blonde. <laughs> Um, and, and very little sort of variance from that formula. And in terms of personality, always very passive, on receive, rarely sort of being the sort of action in the advertising or the marketing. And then I guess as women get older, the stereotype is this sort of perfect mom who's always happy to put herself second, um, uh, never sort of complaining. Um, and, and then towards kind of older life, female life, it's how women disappear and, and stop appearing in advertising um, completely. So th there are a number of different stereotypes that get played out, but all of them we sort of package up as this idea of the, of the good girl, that in order to be good, you have to play these roles and you have to play these roles to please men because women have historically always been secondary in society to the men who had all the wealth, all the power, and as a consequence needed to secure male patronage and therefore had to play these roles. And, and marketing has played quite a big role in crystallizing those ideas, sort of painting them in technicolor for, for the audience and then suggesting that if you buy products and services, you can achieve this good girl status. And, um, uh, actually, and, and oh, you know, almost, you, you know, we continue to see, and this is so is true even, you know, today as almost as much as it was then, but this, you know, this very dominant, um, narrative, perfectionist narratives that say to women throughout their lives, what you are is not enough and you need to change and be different and you should be working towards this idea of the good girl in whatever form that plays out. But where you are now is, is, is not enough and, and, um, and, and therefore you need to change your appearance, you need to change your face, you need to change your hair, you need to change your clothes, you need to change your house, you need to, you know, whatever it is, it's, it's the way you are is, isn't enough. And that's, you know, genuinely is so different from how male audiences get spoken to. You know, the, there isn't, there isn't that constant kind of sense of a need for improvement. improvement. And also that it's not just it's improvement, it's improvement to an impossible ideal. Um, so, you know, it's a sort of an endless, um, an endless sort of perfectionism, which, as we now know, is very, very damaging, particularly for young, um, young women and girls.